So I like this chapter because this chapter kind of talks, gets to the nitty gritty about surface weather patterns. Now remember, as we're talking, kind of talking about what happens on the Earth's surface, that is directly related to kind of what's happening in the upper, upper troposphere too. But um, oftentimes we might find ourselves looking at a weather map and there's different types of weather maps. But this is a surface map in which uh, fronts have been drawn in. And we talked about air masses in the previous chapter. And what a front does is it marks, um, how do I say, it, it, it demarks the fact that we have two air masses that are meeting. Two air masses that are meeting create a front between them. Uh, we have warm fronts and cold fronts. Warm fronts, I'll show you right here, and I'll be talking a little more about this on a slide, but warm fronts are red. And they use semicircles to show the direction that a warm air mass is moving. That's why they call it a warm front, because it's warm air that is moving. And here in the northern hemisphere, our warm air comes from the south in general, doesn't it? So this red line here is a warm front. And notice the semicircles. Now, cold front is, has a blue line with triangles showing us the direction that a cold air mass is moving. So this is an example of a cold front. There are two other fronts that you may or may not be familiar with yet. Um, I bet you're familiar maybe with a stationary front. You kind of see this over here. Notice what a stationary front does is it has alternating blue, red, blue, red, blue segments. And of course the blue have the triangles and the red have the semicircles. So what it's showing up here today is that the stationary front says that we have cold air up here, because the triangle's over here, and we have warm air down here because the semicircles are right there, and stationary front means nothing is moving. All right. Now the third type of front is what we call an occluded front, and we have two pieces of an occluded front here, and they are drawn in purple. I don't know if you can see that one over here. There's another one right here. And they will have triangles, semicircles on the same side of the line. And an occluded front, the way I think of it, is basically it includes, or it, it, we have three air masses of interest that are involved in an occluded front. And basically what we're going to see is that one air mass connects up with um, another air mass, and in between it basically or in the meantime, it lifts up a third air mass that was between them. And I'll kind of show you that here in a minute. So that's an occluded front. Let's see if I can get back to my slides. All right. So we talked about air masses. And when air masses meet, they create what we call a weather front. And what I think is interesting is that on a given, at a given time, you can look on the internet at different uh, weather sites and meteorologists will draw their fronts in slightly different. I think that's kind of interesting. So um, fronts, a weather front in general, you know, when two air masses meet, they clash. And oftentimes with weather fronts, we do get some sort of uh, lifting going on with a weather front. When two air masses meet, air is lifted. And actually, um, cold fronts, I think, I don't know if I mentioned this before, maybe I did, but actually our severe weather is associated oftentimes with cold fronts. Um, so this is, I'll just want to point out, we're not even talking about it in Unit 3 yet, but this to me, you can almost kind of see these, um, they call them striations in this cloud, and to me this looks like a, uh, this kind of uh, little droppy down part almost looks like, like a wall cloud. It looks like a wall cloud over there and maybe a wall cloud there. I don't know. This looks pretty interesting as far as the potential for a tornado. I'm not sure. All right, so fronts. So like I said, fronts are basically where uh, two air masses with differing qualities are meeting. So we talked about the different air mass types. So for instance, Let's go ahead and say that this is a maritime polar meeting up with, um, what should we make this? A, um, how about a continental tropical air mass? 
right here where they meet is the front. I haven't drawn that very good because it looks like there's a gap, but that's the front. So we have uh, what? Cold, moist air here, and we have dry, warm air here in that example. So oftentimes when a front comes, let's just say this is uh, moving this direction. If you are a person here, let me go ahead and draw a stick figure, as this, uh, this would be some sort of, let's see, polar, this would be some sort of cold front. I'll go ahead and in my front I'll draw triangles, okay? If you are here, as this front comes your way, you are going to experience differences in temperature and moisture. I bet you'll buy that. Okay, temperature, moisture, wind speed, pressure, you name it. As a front passes by, you're going to feel different. So um, watch those barometers and see, see, see for yourself if after a front passes, you don't feel different. So as I kind of introduced on uh, when I brought up the, the National Weather Service surface map a minute ago, the direction of the arrows, or the semicircles, indicate the direction that the air mass is moving. So um, notice, you know, I could make, yeah, red is right, isn't it? This would be a cold air mass. I know it's cold because I have triangles. Our warm air in the northern hemisphere tends to come from the south. If I had colors here, which I probably do, but it might take me a minute to find them. If I had colors here, I would make this warm front uh, blue. Okay, so you see how the, the side of the line, the front line that the little markers are on are showing you the direction of movement. Now if you printed out your slides, you know that I kind of took a picture, a figure that was here, and I have relocated it by itself over here. Okay, so just to kind of highlight what we've been talking about, um, cold fronts are blue. Um, oh, I misspoke a minute ago. I think I said I should make my warm front uh, blue and my cold front red. Darn it. Anyway, cold fronts are blue, as hopefully you know, and we use semicircles to show the direction of the cold air mass. Okay, so we have a cold air mass of sorts moving this way. And so that means we have a relatively warm air mass here. See how that works? All right, so there's four fronts I want to show you. The second one is a warm front. It is in red and it uses semicircles. And again, if you note the side of the line that the semicircles are on, we could say that actually we have warm air here that is on the move. It's being aggressive, and it is going over colder air. Does that make sense? The two other air masses we need to talk about, one is a stationary front. And I mentioned a minute ago, a stationary front, you'll see alternating, uh, you know, red semicircle, blue triangle, red semicircle, blue triangle, red semicircle. And so in this case, I can see that I have warm air over here, some sort of warm air mass over here, because I have semicircles on the other side. And I have cold, a cold air mass here. Oops. And um, as stationary implies, it's not moving. It's like a standoff. Then the third type of front is called an occluded front. And I mentioned a minute ago that actually we have three air masses, and I'd like to kind of reserve talking about occluded fronts until we get to those slides. But occluded fronts um, are marked with kind of a purplish line, and notice they have alternating semicircle, triangle, semicircle, triangle, semicircle. So you might kind of already deduce that we have warm and a cold air mass that's doing something. And the direction, uh, occluded fronts also move. And so they, all, they also move in the direction as indicated by the little icons. So one of the things we're going to uh, spend a fair bit of time here um, talking about as we talk about um, weather patterns here 
in North America is something called a mid-latitude cyclone. And we're going to see that, um, well, how do I say, mid-latitude cyclone, when we start to talk about it, you'll say, oh, I see those on the weather map all the time. And you might. Uh, the term mid-latitude cyclone sounds kind of scary, but it's not as, um, I don't know, uh, scary necessarily or uncommon as you might think. We talked in an earlier chapter about um, surface low pressures, those central low pressures, and that is characteristic of a mid-latitude cyclone. Actually, in order for a mid-latitude cyclone to be born and to kind of grow and mature, it starts out with a central low. So I'll kind of highlight that here. We know this is a central low pressure because you can see these isobars getting higher, right? Central low pressure. And one of the things we talked about in an earlier chapter about central lows, we, we call those cyclones, and our movement would be counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. So can you see that kind of movement here? Now we're going to talk about how a mid-latitude cyclone kind of is born and lives its life and matures, and we're going to talk about how a mid-latitude cyclone ultimately dies. But it starts out with the central low pressure, and, and this is kind of what I think of as a mustache, and it has this characteristic, both a cold front, blue line with semicircle, or excuse me, blue line with triangles, and a warm front here. Okay, the mustache, the mustache stage or the beginning stage of a mid-latitude cyclone. Notice it has both of these fronts. Now, as a mid-latitude cyclone matures, and I'll kind of talk a little bit more about the nuts and bolts of a mid-latitude cyclone maturing, but not only does it have the central low, as you can see on this weather map, I'll go ahead and draw in the low. Let me just go ahead and central low pressure right here in the middle, dragging around the cold air that's creating this cold front and the warm air that's creating this warm front. But also, I want to draw your attention to a third front up here. It's one of those occluded fronts that we talked about. Actually, now I see that I misspoke. Dang it, there is the low on here. Sorry. So here's the central low that created our initial um, mustache in the first place. Okay that drags around our uh, air from the north creating a cold front and our air from the south creating a warm front. But now notice uh, I want to highlight this occluded front. So a mature idealized mid-latitude cyclone now will have this occluded front. Again we'll talk more about that kind of the three chunks of air that are involved here with a mature mid-latitude cyclone.